when you press an emoji, it comes up over me. Over me? Is that because you're the one who pushed I'm, it? No, it's because I'm on that side of the screen. You guys ready to go? Already. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the third episode of Soda Popsha. We, you are joined by um, a bunch of us. I've just realised in the heat of the moment I haven't added the stings because I always forget that. So um, I'm going to just quickly do this, and it's going to be real good. And we're going to stall. What a good way to open the show up. Yeah. Oh my We're gosh, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. This is our first episode. My name you is... Have to, <laughs> you have to excuse any mistakes. My name is Alexander Jones, as you can see by this big bubble here. And I'm going to take that off. It's not a bubble, it's and a bottle. We're, that's true. <laughs> Who said that? We are joined today by co-host um, <gasps> I Adam... get my own sting! Oh, oh. You're, not, you're not the co-host. <laughs> Adam Priest here. That's him there. This is how we're going to do the show from now on. It's just this way. On the fly. Uh, and we're also joined by actress, uh, guest, and friend, um, <laughs> Benny. So she's here as well. That's hey. her That's Hello. her there. Kia ora. Well, forgive us for that. Um, as, as we said in episode one, this is very uh, public ac- access television kind of feel. So, you know what? I did that on purpose because I want this to feel like this is a kind of like independent underground you know, like Authentic. That, that, that sort of thing. Mm. If this is your first episode on so, uh, watching Soda Popcha, not on Soda Popcha, for Benny it is, and Adam it is as well. For me it's my third and I should be better at this by now. Uh, if this is your first episode, this is a show where we, we review sodas and we also talk about the week that was in Hollywood news. Now, we've had a, had a, had a big week in Hollywood news. Um, I don't know if you guys... Uh, read the front page of our movies as much as I did, but um, a few a few quick things that have happened this week in movie and entertainment news. Um, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost announced they are working together again on a horror comedy called Slaughterhouse Rules. Um, Charlie's Theron has stated that the script for a Mad Max Fury Road prequel focusing on her character Furiosa has been completed and in speaking of scripts the untitled Batman director Matt Reeves has decided to drop Ben Affleck's script for the upcoming film in favour of of starting the project from scratch and as Game of Thrones season 7 advertising goes into full swing because it's returning next week we're seeing things like interviews and new posters and viral marketing stunts such as uh, the White Walkers riding on horse back into the streets of London this morning I believe yeah but that's not actually what we're going to talk about today um we've got a few stories but before we do what you're all probably here for is this thing here which is our um buffalo wing soda Lester's Fixin's buffalo wing soda we're gonna sample this review this tell you what it's like but before we do I'm gonna pour one out for Joan Lee who is the wife of Marvel Comics legend Stan Lee who unfortunately uh, passed away this last week at the age of 95 they were married for 69 years how beautiful is that go Joan so I'm gonna do you think many of his characters were based off of her Uh, I know that she played someone in one of the Spider-Man cartoons did she really who Um, like voice acted yeah yeah. no she (laughs) Oh yeah, she sure, will give me a laugh. <laughs> she was a live action character in a cartoon. That's great. <laughs> All right. <coughs> Cheers, to guys. To Joan Lee. To Joan. Buffalo wing soda. <laughs> it just smells like sugar. It just tastes like sugar. Mm, they've def- you know There's what? There's spice in there. <laughs> it's spicy. It kind of hits you know, spicy. in the back. Yeah. Yeah. There is kind of an umami chickeny <laughs> taste in there as well. Okay, I just need to try I can it. Taste, I can taste it, you guys. I can taste the wings. Stanton Dunn said skull it, AJ. Okay. It goes right up your nose. Not if you put it in your mouth. <laughs> that, yeah, great. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, let's get on to our first Wait, story. Wait, we didn't review it. Do we yeah, review I, it or not? I, I feel like I have more to say on this. Okay, story. no, I apologize. Yeah. What, what do you want to say? Come on, out of it. Come on, when out. I was younger, I can't remember what age, maybe about 12, and so my younger brother, actually no, I would have been younger than that. I was probably about eight, and so my younger brother was about four. He thought it'd be funny to put pepper in everyone's tea <laughs> as like a, a prank. <laughs> and um, that's what this tastes like. Mm, pepper tea. Pepper tea. That's probably Is all it they good do. though? Because that sounds like it could be kind of good. Well, I don't know. Do you like this? Cause... No, but I like I like the sound of pepper tea. Mm. I think it could be interesting. Mm. You've got me thinking now. It's very peppery. 
Do so I have to our ah uh, yeah, you do because you're about to put another drink in there after this. So you, can, but you don't have to finish it now. You can finish it over the course of the story. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of which, our first story for the night is is. Daniel Craig is returning as James Bond. Hallelujah. Despite saying that he would rather slit his wrists than play James Bond again, Daniel Craig is reportedly returning for a fifth outing as 007. This was announced this week by Bond franchise head Barbara Broccoli, who explained <laughs> what? that... What? Yep. Really? Does he does not know that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Barbara Broccoli, the daughter, I think, of Albert Broccoli, who started Eon Pictures, which... Produces the bond. Is it pronounced broccoli? It's you should not broccoli. just spelt like it broccoli. Could be broccoli. And pronounced. How many other ways can broccoli be pronounced? Uh, broccoli? Broccoli. broccoli. It's probably right. broccoli. Barbara Broccoli um, explained that Craig has always had first right of refru- refusal when it comes to playing the character. Adele is also in the Bond crosshairs again, with Broccoli stating that she is in talks with the singer to deliver her second Bond theme song after an Oscar winning number Skyfall from 2012's Skyfall. Bro- Broccoli stated that uh, Craig and Adele together are the winning team, the ultimate choice, the money spinners. It's taken time, but Daniel has come around, and the strong consensus in the Bond offices is that Mr. Craig is 007 once again. As for Adele, she's more of an unknown quantity, but, um, but loved being part of Bond, so the signs are positive. Last September, it was rumoured that Craig was offered £120 million to return for a fifth Bond movie. I'd do it. Yeah. For 120 million pounds. Yeah. I'd probably do it for slightly less, actually. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, my favorite. I mean, if you were going to be like, oh, slip my wrists, 120 million pounds. <laughs> to return as a character. As a character yeah. for like six months back. and maybe, like, you know, get mm. to go to a beach mm. or yeah. do some action. Um, I think my favorite thing about his statement is that she claims that Craig and Adele together are the winning team. What did Adele do? <laughs> yeah. She sung the song. I don't, I don't think, think it they ever saw to each the other. Story I feel the like song, the song is a separate entity to the movie. People don't mm-hmm. go to the movie and go, "Oh, this movie is so good. The song was really good." Mm, yeah. People go, "Oh, that new James Bond song was really good, but the movie was okay." Mm. Yeah. Or that new James Bond movie was really good, but the song was okay. It's like another form of advertising. Yeah, it's a separate entity. It's yeah, not yeah, yeah. one. And maybe maybe song. that's what she means, but, but maybe, who knows? Yeah, yeah. But um, because well, I feel like um, Casino Royale was a better movie than Skyfall, mm. but this I like the song from Skyfall better. Mm. Okay, I, I don't at all. I think Casino Royale's got the... I think Chris Cornell and Daniel Craig are the perfect... Okay, um, the well, spinners. that's not going to happen. That's never going to happen. Um, <laughs> Should we drink to him? Drink to Chris Cornell? I'm Sorry, right now, Chris. but cheers to Chris Cornell. Um, mm, great. I, I, I know you more. wanted more. As, as I took that last time, I was like, it's such a shame <laughs> oh, that never in my life... No more Buffalo Wing. Again. All these Lester's fixings, like you guys wouldn't know, but they have kind of a similar... Yeah, it's because they're all corn syrup as well. Mm, mm. It's not because they're American drinks. No, they have cane sugar. Oh, sorry, cane sugar. Mm. Pure cane sugar. Uh, oh, okay. Um, so, what kind of strikes me as interesting is this whole Daniel Craig saying he'd rather slit his wrist. That's not the only thing he said. He's gone on record saying like, "Oh, James Bond's a misogynist. He's like a ridiculous character." Which he like, is. He is. He has all yeah. these things, but it's yeah. weird to see like the figurehead of 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 the the industry of the industry the franchise yeah. saying like, "Yeah, I don't actually like the character." And it's like, you know, like James Bond's a, a, you know, famous IP. So it's not yeah. like, it's not like like Robert Pattinson saying he doesn't like Edward Cullen. Like you can kind of get that. And mm. it's, you know, are we, are we, we, Twilight, the Twilight series isn't going to go for 25 films. Yeah. Um, what I, so I've seen, have you guys seen many James Bond movies? I think I've seen, I've seen all bits. of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've seen bits I've, I've of them. Probably okay. yeah. seen all of them. I've seen all of them. And my rule of thumb was three and out. As soon as they, any of these actors do more than three, they're like, they get real, they're they visibly tired, which is what Daniel Craig was in Spectre, yeah. which is the last film he did. Yeah, Spectre was awful. It was, Spectre it was pretty was, bad. It's just a bad movie. It's not even a bad Bond film. It's just a bad mm, movie. Mm. Um, Benny, so you're an actress, Benny. <laughs> am I? Yeah. yeah okay. Are you? I am. Yeah? Okay. Do some acting. acting. A- a- yeah, do some right acting now. right now. It's a character. Yeah, it's a character. Have Life's you, a character. Have you ever played a character that you like really hated or didn't didn't want to play? Ooh. And were you offered 120 million pounds to return? If I I wouldn't be living here if I <laughs> didn't get that kind of money. Um, oh, you wouldn't. Oh, I just think about this question a lot when you ask me, and I was mm. like, I I don't know. I got characters I was disappointed in because mm-hmm. I was like, I don't want to be. The bad guy. Mm-hmm. I always got put as the bad guy or the mother character. Mm-hmm. Always the mum character. I don't know why. And that's always disappointing when you're like, I want to be the lead. And yeah, you yeah. get put as the, the overbearing mother who hates her child. You mm. just need the right story where there's a bad 
mum who's yeah. the main character. Right. And that's yeah. your, your starring role. Exactly. So that's what I'm waiting for. But no, I've never had a character that I've wanted to slip my wrists rather yeah, than yeah. play. Yeah. If you have um, any thoughts on uh, James Bond uh, and Daniel Craig returning as him, please let us know. Um, yeah. So I think I'm troubled by this because I've never seen an actor so clearly over a movie he was in than Daniel Craig and Spectre. You know, so I'm just I'm worried that, you know, is he gonna is he gonna return refreshed and being like you know what we're gonna make this one work because I think only once has a movie after the third usually usually so there've been what six or seven bonds now um, over the last um, fifty years usually I have no idea a so lot Sean Connery George Lazenby Roger, Roger Moore. Moore Timothy Dalton Pierce Brosnan Daniel Craig so six six um, usually they yeah their first one is usually their best one like by and large their first one's usually but there's a couple of exceptions such as Sean Connery a lot of people think either Goldfinger or um, From Russia With Love yeah. are his best ones and his first one was Dr. No um, I'm randomly just showing off my Bond, Bond knowledge. knowledge I didn't plan to do this <laughs> sorry about um, it <laughs> but like Daniel Craig uh, Casino Royale's yeah his like, best one yeah. no one's going to beat that yeah. no, no one's going to beat that but I do wonder if he's going to return for a fifth movie reinvigorated in any way or if it's going to clearly just be you know because that's, oh. that's kind of the excitement of, of getting a new one is like cool they, they were going to have to do like a soft reboot again yeah there is that concern of like if if he didn't want to play it, is that going to show mm. in your performance? Because if you've got to really find something within the character that you believe in mm. or that you relate to mm. or that, you know, is a, that you, you can kind of be like, okay, cool, I can, I can do that. Um, so if he's really hating the character, then mm. it's, it's going to come out. Yeah, yeah. Whether he realizes it or not. That, that's actually really interesting you bring that up because he is starring in a movie this year that's coming out this year called Logan Lucky. Mm. Um, if you haven't seen the trailer for Logan Lucky, go and watch it because it looks hysterical. And he's playing like a Southern American um, criminal in it. And like the the trailer, he looks he looks like he's having fun again. Yeah. Like it looks like he, like there's this hilarious part of the trailer where he's he's getting like changed in the backseat of the car yeah. and like this woman's driving and he's like no peeking. And then she like like rolls her eyes and like glances at the mirror here and be like no peeking and it's like it's so funny and like in the in the extra trailer itself it goes through like who else is like Channing Tatum's in it um, yeah. and all you know all these people are in it and then star studded cast yeah then it says introducing Daniel Craig and that's so what it feels like <laughs> because it's like he's back, a, a rebirth you know? yeah, of an yeah, actor yeah, yeah. Yeah. maybe that's why he was tired of playing Bond because like if you play one character you get known for that character yeah. Yeah, yeah. and maybe he found it hard to find other roles and mm. he wanted to push himself yeah, yeah. I, I personally f- I know uh, he's been in other movies but I feel like he is only known for James Bond yeah, yeah. maybe he, he doesn't want to be known yeah. as James Bond he wants to be mm. known as an actor mm. um, as a, a good actor for varied roles yeah. but that's, he's, he's, really he's kind good. of pigeonholed right yeah mm. he's really yeah. good in um, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo yeah true he, he, he's a really enjoyable character in that yeah and I, I wonder if maybe he just doesn't like James Bond as a person. Yeah. And that's part of it. Ooh. Right. Shall we Shall we try our next soda? I think so. <laughs> okay. So this is one I picked up today. Uh, this is Guang's pineapple beer drink. I think it's Guang's. Guang's Guang. pineapple beer drink. Um, I was at a play recently and while waiting and in, in, to, to go into the into the um, audience, I heard someone be like, "Man, I just had this pineapple beer. It was so weird." And I was like, "You got to find I, that." Yeah, and I found it today. <laughs> so, whoa! Just, <laughs> it just, just exploded and was like on live stream <laughs> before. Oh, I can smell it already. Uh, before I pour it for you guys, I'm going to pour one out for where are we? Pour one out for Nelson Ellis, who's the star of the TV show True Blood. Um, and he actually died at 39 in this past oh. week, so that's pretty lame. That's really lame. All right. How your friend, died, um, you know? I don't. Your friend don't. Josh Josh Monson said, "Where's Richard?" And then no one replied, and so he said, "I'm out." <laughs> oh, Josh, that's hard. Pass me, pass Very me harsh. Much. Richard's probably upstairs. Am I not good enough, Josh? Yeah, Josh. Josh. If Richard started his own live stream right now, he would have one person watching. <laughs> Take that! All right to uh, Nelson Ellis. Nelson Ellis. Nelson Ellis. This one looks cool. Mm. It smells good. It, it smells like. It um, looks like beer. Maybe that's why they call it pineapple beer. No. Sorry, that was. Sorry. Man, that genuinely. <laughs> that was harsh. That was a bit that harsh. That genuinely combines the flavors of pineapple and beer. 
It's not super sour like a real pineapple mm. juice would be. Yeah, I love it. It's good. I'm enjoying it. I would, drink, I would drink more of that. What mm. does it smell like to you guys? Pineapple. Well, yeah. But <laughs> pineapple lollies. Yes. It's kind of like... like pineapple lumps. Pi- mm. like, kind of Pine- like pineapple yeah. lumps, but yeah. without the chocolate. You heard it here first, folks. Guan's pineapple beer tastes like pineapple, but also beer. Like there's a legitimate <laughs> beer kind of aftertaste. And then that's really interesting. There's a bit more if anyone wants to refill. Let me finish this one. All right, I'll, I'll put it in the mic up. Go for it. Cool, cool. Mm, this so, is genuinely good. Our second story, while we sip away at our pineapple beers for mm-hmm. the night, is John Oliver to play Zazu in live action Lion King remake. Woo. And I say live action because what makes it live action if it's all CGI? Mm. Oh. It's going to look kind of real. Yeah. So John Favreau, who did the the Jungle Book remake, he's doing it as well. Yeah. So, um, last week tonight, host John Oliver has joined the cast of John Favreau's quote unquote live action remake of the Disney classic Lion King. I shouldn't have done that joke outside of reading the script because now I've just made it twice. But this is grassroots, everybody. This is this is real television right now. <laughs> That's um, not even on TV. Uh, and so he, he's joined the cast. <laughs> as Zazu the red-billed hornbill who was originally voiced by Rowan Atkinson in the original 1994 classic. Oliver joins fellow community star Donald Glover as Simba plus Billy Eichner as Timon, Seth Rogen as Pumba and James Earl Jones who is reprising his role from the original film as Mufasa. Other Lion King characters such as Rafiki, Nala, the Hyenas and Scar have yet to be cast. So, what do you guys think? I... (laughs) I was so gutted to hear that Seth Rogen got put as... You don't think that's good? No, because he's got such a distinctive voice, I can only see him as Seth Rogen. Mm. I don't think I could see him as... Which one is he? Timon or Pumba? Pumba. So he's the one that looks like Seth Rogen. The The (laughs) warthog. I don't know, because I guess growing up with The Lion King, you know you kind of get this idea of who Pumba is and what Seth Rogen is a very distinctive voice. So Mm. would he ruin it or would he make it... Better. I'm just a little bit apprehensive about mm-hmm. that. Me too, actually. Yeah. I would like to see someone more like John C. Riley playing. Yeah. Playing Pumba. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, or Alan Tudyuk. Tudyuk. T- Tudyk. I always thought it was Tudyk. I've never seen that. Everyone keeps saying Tudyuk, and I'm like, that just sounds cool. I wish it's Tudyuk. It's fun to say. Do you reckon he'd be a good Pumba though? He's so versatile. He's so versatile. Have you seen him in some of his voice credits? That's true. What else has Seth Rogen voice acted? Was he in Lego movies? Uh, Monsters vs. Aliens. He was the big blue blob. In Monsters vs. Oh, Aliens. Right. Which yeah, was, yeah. just sounded like Seth Rogen. <laughs> yeah. um, no, he's been a, he was the sausage in Sausage Party. Yeah, but that was but then his again, movie. That was his yeah. movie. Um, I'm, I don't know. What's Seth Rogen been in? If you're watching, please tell us. Um, Sam, Sam commented saying, Hi Adam, we miss you. And then he commented again because I hadn't mentioned it saying, I know you saw that. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi Sam. Uh, so I think that um, John Oliver, it's oh, yeah, it's right. rough because it's like in my mind it's either like you got to do a completely new cast or like stick to them right because the fact that James Earl Jones James is returning Jones, yeah, as Mufasa that's, that's very weird. Who pro- like I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna break some hearts here. Mufasa's voice, I don't know if that needs to be. The original yeah. voice act, like someone like I don't know, he's one of the smaller parts when yeah. you think about mm. it. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. he dies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> I, I more mean that like like Rowan Atkinson's voice is like yeah, that's Rowan Atkinson's yeah. voice. James yeah. Earl Jones, despite being prolific, I wouldn't say he's like a, as much of a household name as Rowan yeah. Atkinson no. would be, or at least yeah. not when you yeah. see Rowan Atkinson. Um. So yeah, I, I'm not sure if 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 I'm happy about John. He certainly looks like Zazu. <laughs> I, I, I'm happy with John Oliver playing Zazu yeah. because I feel like he's the modern day Rowan Atkinson. True, yeah. he's that side of comedy with a with a touch of like intelli- intelligent mm. um, com- conversation about it. You mm. know, like he, he talks about things that matter, yeah. which I feel like Rowan Atkinson was always keen on as well. Mm. But he's always joking around too, and he's also British as well. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, I I think Zazu works as a British. And so far, just as a little yeah. side note, both lion roles are African American. Hey, um, and Nala, I think. 
Beyonce has been rumoured to no, be cast as, no. as Nala. No. So, I mean, yeah, but Nala, who cares about Nala's voice? Who cares yeah. about Beyonce's voice acting? Like Beyonce fans <laughs> care about Beyonce's voice they, acting. I think if, if they did cast her, it would purely be for her name. Mm. Do, if yeah, they does put Nala even poster, sing in The Lion King? No, but I'm sure they'd add a part. For <laughs> they probably would. I want something. it to be another Moana situation mm-hmm. where you get a completely unknown person. True, and, true. Yeah. Like, she fit the role perfectly yeah. of Moana, mm-hmm. so... I remember there Donald Glover playing Simba. Out there. That, that's a cool role. Yeah, and yeah. he could he could play both young and old yeah. versions of the character as well. Mm. I think I think probably Jeremy Irons as Scar would be the most iconic voice. But we've we've talked about this on the Cop Culture podcast before. Is that that voice isn't hard to find someone else to do? Like you get Benedict Cumberbatch to play Scar. Like, yeah, oh, any day. It's, it's that that voice that sounds like a little bit like Snape and a little bit like. Jafar, you know, yeah. <laughs> like it's yeah. it's pretty easy to to find someone who can replicate that. I don't know. I probably I probably wouldn't have cast James Earl Jones as Mufasa controversially. What else know. has he been in? He's Darth Vader. Oh, that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> that's probably yeah. all. Was that all? Yeah. <laughs> and he was just the voice. Of yeah, Darth just the voice. He didn't play. He's, he's a big fat guy, so he didn't he play the body. <laughs> no, the body was some other guy <laughs> who thought he was going to do the voice, do the voice. and tried really hard on the lines. <laughs> Yeah, no. But I've heard, I've heard it, it doesn't sound good. He's like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> um, cool, okay. Oh, man. So, yeah, we, we vote yay on John Oliver as, yeah. as Zazu. But question the other choices. Mm-hmm. Okay, Definitely. okay. What about Billy Eichner as Timon? Oh. Do you know who Billy Eichner is? Was he, the, was he the guy on um, Parks and Rec yeah. and he was like a really, really strange guy? I haven't who... seen him in Parks and Rec, but I know he's from there. He's kind of funny, but okay. he's very strange. Will, will he be a good I th- Timon? I think he's quite a versatile actor. I think he would have probably made a better Pumba, to be really? honest. Really? Because Timon is very authoritative. I think they're thinking skinny guy and fat guy foil. And so they've got a skinny guy like Billy Eichner and a fat yeah. guy like Seth Rogen. Yeah. Someone commented, yeah, uh, James Gilling commented saying, I think Tud Yike, Tud Yike, Tud Yike would make a better Timon. That, yeah, Timon. actually, that's a good, that's yeah, a good idea. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Mm. Yeah. At least it's I not, agree. At least it's not Seth Rogen and, um, I don't know, Jonah Hill. Like, so yeah, yeah, yeah. If they're yeah, not doing yeah. like an Apatow cast for yeah. I, I always thought it'd be like Key and Peele or something. Yeah, like, Key and like Peele would have been great. Oh, yeah, they yeah. would Because be they have fantastic. distinctive voices. Mm. They're very funny. And they're a duo. Like, Timon and Pumba are a duo. You never see Timon mm. without Pumba, you know. Mm. And they run off each other. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. Tell us your dream casting for the Lion King uh, reboot in the comments, and we might read them out later on. But right now, we're going to move on. We're going to move on, and I've got our last drink for the night, which is humble honey soda. Which actually sounds pretty nice. It's very hipster. I've been mm. looking forward to this one. Mm. Um. So before we drink it, however, I'm going to pour one out. For... Oh, I, did you shake it up? It's got like bits in it. Well, I've, I've, um, I'll put the thing on. Uh-oh. I can see little um, biddies floating around in it. I don't know whether that's a good thing, but we'll see. You just wanted to, to explode again. Well, well, <laughs> it did. There it goes. Oh, hello, Why don't you just pour it? <laughs> I don't know, man. All right, I'm going to pull one out for um, Sharon Tate, the wife of director Roman Polanski, who was murdered by Charles Manson and, and his followers in 1969. And that is reportedly going to be the subject for Quentin Tarantino's next film, uh, with Margot Robbie being eyed for the role of Sharon Tate. And Jennifer uh, Lawrence. I don't think she's she's playing... I don't think she's being eyed for... Oh, I um, thought she was being eyed for someone. One of the characters. Yeah, she is. She is. I didn't want to go into it, but you okay. brought it up now. So, oh, sorry. yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence, like Samuel Jackson, and Brad Pitt are all also rumored for playing roles. I someone tried. suggested a cocktail based on the pineapple beer. Uh, it's called a pineapple beer garita. So it's a pineapple beer that we had with tequila, lime, and ice. <gasps> Who suggested that? Uh, Mapihi Opai. Oh, nice. Genius. Thank you, Mapihi. Um, all right, to uh, Sharon Tate. To Sharon Tate. Poor lady. Wow. It's quite lemony. That's nice. I like it. It kind of tastes like honey comb rather than honey. Like, it's got honey essence, but it's mm. not quite honey. The last time I had honey was about four years ago. 
So it's been a while. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I haven't edited in a long time. I haven't edited in a long time. Um, no, I, I, it's, I, I don't it's know. Nice. I, I like it. I probably wouldn't drink any more of it. I would. I think I that's like my, it. yeah, my limit. It's too lemony. It I feel like... if it was too honey-y, it would be too sweet. I preferred it over the other ones because the other ones were a little bit too sweet for my liking. Mm. Mm. This yeah, it's not not bit... very sweet at all. This is, this is mm. a little more sour. Mm. A little more friendly. Mm. Yeah. I think it's refreshing. I like it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, moving right along, we, we've, we've got a casting theme tonight on the news. And our last story of the night, casting troubles for live-action Aladdin. So on the other side of the Disney remake spectrum, Guy Ritchie's live-action Aladdin movie is reportedly having trouble finding its stars after previously stating that they are wanting to cast ethnically accurate actors as the film's solely Middle Eastern cast. A couple names have been thrown around for Aladdin himself, including Slumdog Millionaire's Dev Patel and Rogue One's Riz Ahmed, who was also in The Night Of. Yep. Um, but Disney is wanting to go with more unknown faces for the Agrabah street rat and his princess love interest. The casting process, which started in March, has involved around 2,000 potential Aladdins and Jasmines auditioning for the roles from all around the world, but Disney is still searching for that perfect combination of ethnicity, acting chops, and singing ability. Yeah, that'll be tough. Yeah. <laughs> they've, 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 cut, they've got their work cut out for yeah. them. I appreciate that, actually. Yeah. That they're not trying to go for the name, they're trying to go for the talent. Yeah. Mm. Mm. As, yeah, as cool. someone who wants to be an actor, you know, that's... You're not Middle Eastern, though. So. I'm not Middle Eastern, but it's just exciting that those opportunities are out there. I'm also glad they haven't <laughs> settled for someone who looks exactly right. Yeah, because who's I made? Because sing. they could cast someone who looks exactly like yeah. how Aladdin looks in the animated, mm. um, but just auto-tune them mm. to get the performance, but it wouldn't be the same. Mm. Yeah. No, uh, yeah. Riz, Riz Ahmed looks, in my opinion, astonishingly like a live-action Aladdin. But he he's does, also yeah. in his mid-30s. Right, yeah. And I think he Aladdin, looks young, though. Like Aladdin's in the Night Off, he plays a teenager. Yeah, like he a does. Young, that's true, actually. He does. 20s. That's a good point. Yeah. Maybe I'm just thinking of him in Rogue One where he's got his beard. Yeah. Um. Oh, and this is old news, but if you didn't know, uh, the current... I don't know if it's confirmed or not yet, but the current casting for the genie is Will Smith. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I don't know. <laughs> uh, Robin Williams has set some really high standards right so the you journey. don't you shouldn't try shouldn't try them. no I feel like it's the, the Heath Ledger Joker of animated parts well if it's good yeah <laughs> like He's no, like, no, no, no no I mean I like see what you're saying. I yes, mean yeah. like once some if anyone's gonna do another Joker mm. everyone's gonna compare it to Heath Ledger's because yeah. it was so damn good yeah. but at so, least they've had what 26 years not um not 4 years between yeah, yeah the and there hasn't now. been any other genies yeah, yeah. really so mm. Mm. Yeah, as long I like. guess as long as he does his own thing and does it plays it genuinely as yeah, himself yeah. or whatever he genuinely. wants to do. Genuinely, I can I can imagine him doing <laughs> it. I tried. I tried. tried. <laughs> I can imagine yeah. him doing it. You know. Yeah, me too. I think it'd be Mr. quite. Star Aladdin. Like, it'll, like it'll be different. It'll be very different. Yeah. I hope they make the genie look different. Turn well. around now, switch. He should still be blue. I feel like. That's oh yeah, blue. Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. But not look this the exact same kind of puppy. Mm. Except yes. that, like, Will Smith's kind of humour is more just, like, oh, I don't want to be, like, typical African-American, but, you know, like... <laughs> it's not really, though. No, like, no, I, no, I, I think his humour is very, he's, like, um, he's sharp. Hilarious. He's hilarious. Yeah, he's sharp. Whereas, like, when Robin Williams played the genie, it was more like he was a little bit stupid, a little yeah, bit funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit clumsy. Aloof, yeah. And it, I don't, Will Smith doesn't like looking foolish. Exactly. He doesn't like looking no. foolish. You're right. And, and the genie does. Mm. Yeah, well, he likes having the Robin Williams' genie did. <laughs> Um, do you think there'll be any fresh prince jokes? Yes. Like, because he wants to be a prince, you know? Yeah. Mm. I wish to be a prince. He's like, of Bel -Air. A, a fresh prince? <laughs> <laughs> That'll happen. Um, Guy Ritchie's an interesting directing choice as well. This is a lot of old news. The, the newest news is that they haven't cast anyone. Um, which, yeah, I guess I, I appreciate. I'm, I'm, I'm tentative about a live-action Aladdin movie, because Aladdin's probably my favourite Disney movie. Um, like, Re Renaissance Me too. Disney movie. Me too, yeah. Um, but... Mm. If you're going to be remaking them live action like they have done with Beauty and the Beast and The Jungle Book, don't omit Aladdin. Like I want, I want my Aladdin remake. I want to hear those yeah. songs again. So. Yeah. yeah, I think um, Arvind Jogia. I think that's how you say his name. Did you guys ever watch? Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna show how tweeny I am right now. Okay. Um, did you ever watch Victorious, the Nickelodeon show? I'm aware of its existence. Okay. I know the song. Never seen the show. <laughs> yeah. How's the song go? Uh, I I, don't know. I can I can hear it in my head, but I wouldn't be able to like sing it. I don't think I know the words, but I know yeah. I was about to sing it, but it was actually the theme song from Un Unfabulous, starring Emma Roberts. Stuck in that moment. was a good show. Unfab oh yeah, that was animated, right? No, no. Okay, I'm thinking of a different show. <laughs> All right, what what? Who's this person you're talking about, Benny? Um, he. 
Oh, you just have to get a picture up of him. You have to see him. He's like perfect. Okay. Well, anyway, good. <laughs> no, like perfect for the role, but okay. it, it, he's also very perfect. But he's um um he can sing. I think he can dance. He can act. He's young enough to look like a teenager. Are you casting for Aladdin or the genie? Aladdin. Oh, sorry. I thought you were casting. I for thought we were back to Aladdin. No, no go go. Ahead. I have no idea for the genie. What um, um what 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 color is this person? He is. I think he's Indian. He's very Middle Eastern. They are looking for Aladdin. Yeah, person. the good exactly. thing about There's Aladdin. There's a lot of Twitter Twitter um talk about him. Mm-hmm. The and, good thing about Aladdin is it's not. Like, the animated movie is not set in a real place. It's set in this kind of fictitious land mm. that's kind of a mix between Middle East, a bit of Egypt, you know, a bit mm. of India, you know. It's mm. it's not a real place, so they can cast from a whole bunch of different ethnicities yeah. Yeah. and still get, like, that authentic Ad- Aladdin look. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm, I'm excited for it. So that brings us to the end of um, our news stories. But we are going to play a little game tonight. And what how this game works is I'm going to each give you a, a question. We, we're going to do a few rounds each. And the loser has to drink the Buffalo Wing Honey Pineapple Beer. Whew. How's that for a cocktail, Marpahi? Is that, yeah. is that what we want? Compared to your previous week's cocktails, I think this <laughs> yeah. one's actually going to be quite tasty. I'm not that's, nervous. That's like, it's going to be a little bit peppery and a little um, bit of the other flavors. A pineapple, but, but a honey. I feel like they go together all right. So yeah. We've got a few other comments here. Oh, yeah? I'm sorry. There's, there's been a spam of them, so I'm going to try and... Oh, how exciting. Oh, spamming. Um, someone's, your brother, Nick Jones, says, have an unknown play the genie, okay. which I think is risky because... Yeah. The genie is such a big role. You need I, a big yeah, person. If there ever, I disagree strongly, brother. If there was ever, <laughs> if there was ever a role that needed star power behind it, it's someone who has a similar caliber of charisma as Robin Williams, but in a completely different way, which Will Smith provides. We've talked about before. We like. I would like to see maybe The Rock do it. Um, he says Will Smith is a terrible idea. Uh, I agree, Nick. I do. <laughs> I do. I really do. Okay. Sam Page says this was a role Tobias Funk deserves. I don't know who Funke that is. From uh, Arrested Funk, Development. Funk, okay. Sick Arrested Development joke, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> um, James Gilling says I love Will Smith. I think he'll bring his own style to it rather than try to emulate Robin Williams, mm-hmm. which I agree with. Um, and that's basically, that's basically it. it. Cool. Ooh. Okay, so this game is called da, 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 Actual Movie or Cheese Dream. So I'm gonna just, just I'm gonna talk to you each one at a time. I'm gonna describe the basic plot of a movie. You have to tell me if this is an actual movie or if I just dreamt it. So okay. it's something you specifically yeah, dreamt. Like I had a, I ate too much cheese, went to sleep, dreamt this. Okay. Okay. And if you get it wrong, if we get it right, you get a point. If you get it wrong, um, you got to drink that. Well, I mean, eventually. eventually. Whoever wins. You know how it works. How many questions are there? Uh, I think you have four each. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm ready. Benny, you're, you're, you're up first, okay? Okay. <laughs> Le Monologue de Xantha, or The Monologues of Xantha, is a French animated film about a talking pig who re- recites Shakespeare. Is that an actual movie or a cheese dream? It's an actual movie. It's a cheese dream. Oh! You had this cheese dream. <laughs> yes, I had this cheese dream. <laughs> Wow. I thought someone would have made it. I thought it was a bit strange how it was a French movie, but about Shakespeare, because Shakespeare's very English. Mm. Like, I think yeah. only English-speaking countries study Shakespeare, and each country, each other language has their own version of Shakespeare. Mm. Mm. Uh, really? You reckon? Yeah. I reckon totally. Shakespeare's yeah, yeah. universal. I know there's like a, there's a Russian Shakespeare, I don't know his name, okay. but in Russia they have their own kind of like playwright, famous it's playwright. It's called Spear Shake. <laughs> in Russia... Is it Chekhov? Might be Chekhov. Yeah, he's pretty popular in Russia. Mm. Yeah. All right, Adam, is this a cheese dream or an actual film? Uh, Kooky is an independent live action slash stop motion Czech film about a little pink teddy bear named Kooky who attempts to escape a landfill with the help of junk creatures, including a forest guardian referred to throughout the film as Captain Goddamn. (laughs) Is that an actual movie or a cheese dream? I feel like this is a cheese dream. Okay. Because... It's a, like an amalgamation of several movies I can think mm. of. Um, I'm thinking Toy Story 3, mm-hmm. mm. Escape in the Junkyard with a Bear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking Groot mm-hmm. as the tree. 
Um, yeah. So, am I right? Um, that's an actual film. Oh! Uh, Kooky was directed by Jean <laughs> Sverak in 2010 with a lot of the creative team behind indie games Machinarium and Bot- Botanicula. That's how I actually discovered it because yeah. I'm a fan of those games. And you can find Kooky to watch on iTunes. I recommend it, but I don't know why it's called Captain Goddamn. Isn't that, <laughs> isn't that such a dreamlike element? Is, is to that be in? the English translation that's the of what it's The subtitles refer to him as Captain Goddamn. But in Czech, he's probably something some else. Czech but word. for some yeah. reason... Okay. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Crazy. Mm-hmm. All right, Benny. Yes. Uh, Pom Poco is an anime film about raccoons with testicles that are so large they are able to use them as parachutes. <laughs> oh, God. It's an actual film or a cheese dream I have. This is very hard. Yeah, this is very difficult. <laughs> you know what? I would not be surprised if it was an actual movie. Is that your answer? I don't know, is it? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> It is an actual film. Oh! Tom Poco is a Studio Ghibli film released in 1994 starring Tanuki or raccoon dogs who are all animated with prominent testicles as derived from the Japanese folklore surrounding the creature. Look it up. <laughs> you type in Tom Poco, the, the next word will be testicles. And there's wow. all these screenshots of them with massive bulls. <laughs> your, your brother corrected me and said that apparently everybody studies Shakespeare. Oh. Ooh, thank you. But it must be translations, right? Like, oh yeah. If you're studying, the translation well, it was a, the Xanthar thing was a cheese. How do they translate Old English to other languages? Very difficult, yeah. I'd yeah. say. How do you do thou in Russian? I, yeah, I don't know. I was going to make a joke, but I don't know enough about Russian to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um. So that's one point to Benny so far. Yes. Benny's in the lead. Adam. Okay. Uh, Gigantic is an indie romantic comedy about a couple who meet and fall in love over their shared desire to adopt a Chinese baby. In the end, the male lead also murders a hobo who's played by Zach Galifianakis. Definitely Cheese Dream. That's an actual film. Damn it. Gigantic yeah. also it just stars... just sounds like something you would think <laughs> up. <laughs> well, check this out. It also stars Paul Dano, Zoe Deschanel, and John These Goodman. are like all your favourite people. <laughs> That's think... an actual film, Gigantic. It's not very good. But is it on it Netflix? Probably. I think I've heard of it. Mm. Oh, damn it. All right, so Benny's still in the lead. All right, Benny. Feliz Cumplenos, or Happy Birthday, is a Mexican film about a suicidal man who is visited by a singing telegram dwarf in a sombrero to sing him Happy Birthday, much to the man's chagrin. The man and the dwarf go on a journey to discover who could have possibly cared enough to send the telegram in the first place. Cheese dream. That's a cheese dream. Two points to Benny. Damn it. All right, Adam. It seems like a nice dream. (laughs) <laughs> it was it was a nice dream uh, Adam Black Bear is a Canadian horror comedy film about a small neighbourhood thrown into panic after sightings of a black bear roaming through the backyards fears are put to rest when the bear turns out to be just a large domestic dog however the dog is actually a demonic shapeshifter <laughs> who could transform into any black animal and continues to terrorise the town actual film with cheese dream this would be a sick film yeah but I think it's a cheese dream it's a cheese dream one yeah, point to Adam uh, you one... should make that I reckon that'd be a great movie yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it had too many twists. Mm. All right. To be real. Benny, this is your last question. Mm-hmm. You could get this wrong and Adam could catch up to you. or And then it's a tie. Oh, then I have to drink it. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's just aim for that. You should just <laughs> throw it. Just wait, throw wait, no, question. no. I'm going <laughs> to change, change the rules then. Um, all right, shall I make this? How, how can I make this more fair then? Well, it's no, still going to be know. fair because I, I can't make sure I get it right. Okay. Yeah. You know? Like, and even if she sure throws the answer okay. and I, I, I can still get it wrong. All right. 9-11 is an American drama starring Charlie Sheen and Whoopi Goldberg who get stuck in an elevator during the World Trade Center attacks. Cheese Dream. It's an actual film. What a terrible idea for it's a movie. Up, It hasn't come out yet. It's an upcoming film. Based on a play of the same name, it will come out on September 8th, 2017. <gasps> I feel Charlie like that's Sheen really and Whoopi like, Goldberg. I thought like, they were completely obsolete by then, but then I realized they're not. So that's my bad. All right. Adam. Yeah. Killing Hasselhoff is an American indie film about a guy who has to kill David Hasselhoff to win half a million dollars to pay off his crippling debt. Real movie. It's an actual film. I've heard yes. one. Later this year, other than David Hasselhoff himself, the film also stars Ken Jeong, Reese Darby, and I watched the trailer this morning. The reason I thought it might be real is because I know David Hasselhoff will do shitty, mm. ulti indie movies mm. like Kung Fury. Mm. Um, he's just that kind of guy. Like He knows that his mm. fame is kind of a meme. And, um, should I make like on a, board. a tiebreaker or no. no I reckon you should drink it should I have to drink <laughs> yeah, it yeah, yeah. Yeah. shit yeah. otherwise you're gonna have to come up with some kind of crappy tiebreaker yeah yeah like something that's really obviously yeah you really just, like... or something you just thought of on the cuff I actually did have a have a question I deleted maybe I should do that one and whoever gets it first just drink it I think you just drink the drink yeah. and then you can ask us your question yeah I reckon 
I didn't expect this to happen. It's a lot of drink. It is I'm a not, lot I'm of drink. I'm not going to drink it all. Okay. It smells like a lem sip. It lemon. would, right? Think about those flavors. It lemon would smell spicy, honey. lemon, and pineapple. Yeah, and honey. I mean, as sorry, well. pineapple and honey. Oh, he's doing well. Someone said, Are you sure that was cheese you were eating? You sound drugged. <laughs> Who said that? Uh, James Gilling. Thanks, James. Um, I think it was cheese. I can't remember. These dreams happened to me a long time ago. I just committed them to memory. Do you know for the Black Bear one? I went to my Facebook um, messages and typed dream into the search bar and found a dream I'd forgotten about that I'd described to someone nice. like a year That's ago. That's cool. Uh, this tastes exactly like lem sip. The overwhelming flavour would be the pineapple and the honey Ooh. mixing together. Has it still got that spicy... Oh, no, not at all. Capri. Like, you can taste the chicken... <laughs> oh, that's weird because you couldn't taste the chicken. I couldn't when... taste the chicken. No, I couldn't. Well, you can taste whatever that flavor under the the spice was of the buffalo wings. Let's say mm. it just astounds me that people actually came up with this. Mm. And then you know what I think they did? It. They bought a whole bunch of different flavorings and like tasted them and were like, "What does this taste like?" Kind of tastes like barbecue chicken. There we go. We've got it. Mm. Yeah, that's definitely what they did. All right, that's the show for this week. Um. Thank you very much for watching. And if you liked this, if this is your first experience with Cold Popsha, you can actually find us on YouTube and Facebook. We do a bunch of other stuff. We do a podcast. We do videos every now and then. Um, yeah, check check that out. Um, Benny, as our guest, is there anything you want to tell people to check out? I didn't prep you with that. Just no. look, look out for her. She's an up-and-coming actress. I've got She's an Instagram. In, she, <laughs> what's your Instagram? Uh, Benny Joy Smith, or one word. There you go. So, yeah, I guess... Um, Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please share this, please show your friends, and we will see you on the flippity flop. <laughs> Try time. the pineapple beer. Mm, the pineapple beer was good. I like. I like the the honey soda. My, that was my favorite. I liked the combination of all three. All right. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.